Hello, Martin here. Over the past few releases, we've uh, made several modifications, changes to the chamfering inside of Max. So I kind of wanted to go over some of the settings and uh, just in general over the chamfer modifier. So let's get started. First thing you'll notice is we have uh, preferences. This is great for stay, uh, saving and loading uh, preferences that you might make. Um, you can quickly save them here. If you save them, it'll come up with a way you can name it, and you can even make it default if you want to make your own default. Um, and then loading, you know, you can choose whichever one you want, and then just hit the load button. <clears throat> this is pretty common. Uh, we're doing presets more and more often now, uh, so you probably see it in other areas like the fluids, for example. Um, the next is the corner option. So this is the mitering. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and increase the amount so we can see something, and I'll turn on edge faces. So right now we see radial. Uh, we have we introduced radial and patch um, here fairly recently. Um, you can see how they work, and um, and of course uniform. So I recommend using uniform uh, radial or patch these days. Quad and Tri are there. They're more for legacy purposes. So if you open an old scene that you had the chamfer modifier on, uh, this stuff will still show up. So. Uh, but from now on, moving forward, I would just use uniform radial or patch. Um, one of the reasons people still use try is because it allowed you to go to zero segments. But um, now, all of them do it. So whether you're in uniform, get down to zero, radial, or patch, they all support uh, zero segments. So another thing, I'd, I'll just turn off wireframe really quick. Another thing I'd like you to notice is the, the UV uh, mapping. We put a lot of effort into making sure that that stays consistent. So that works really well. Um, patch and radial do the best. Um, uniform, just because of the, the way the geometry comes together on this corner. Uh, you can see it, it kind of pinches it in, so it's kind of pulling it towards that center point, um, whereas radial and patch handle it better. Okay, so the next thing I'd like to go over is, I'll just turn this on, we have um, in bias. And what in bias does is the, the end point of an edge that's selected, it will um, determine where along this edge length it'll terminate. So at, at a value of zero, it's a nice sharp edge. And then of course you can interpolate it out to one, and it'll take it all the way to the other end. So it's kind of nice to be able to control that. All right, so I'll go ahead and turn this off. Next thing I want to cover is the amount type. So we have three different types. We have legacy as well, which I definitely wouldn't recommend that. Uh, again, that's uh, for legacy purposes. Um, I would stick with either fixed by weight or by grease weight. So um, just expand this out a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, so by grease weight, we'll interpolate um, along the length of the edge. So for example, if I, you, if I set a, a minimum and maximum, so we'll set this to, let's say, two, and then I go to edge mode of edible poly and turn on end result. I'll just go back to chamfer and set it to um, all edges now. And um, then we'll select some edges. So let's say I select this edge and I set the crease weight to one. So we see this, the length of the edge is one all the way across, uh, but as it interpolates down, you can see that the edge gets thinner and thinner. So I can select other edges, increase those. And you can see that it's actually interpolating now between zero and one. So we're getting uh, kind of a blend there. Increase that. See, so that's kind of how creases work. Uh, you can use the preset modifier. Uh, you can use the data channel to drive this, and um, so it works pretty good. Um, the my favorite way is by just by regular weight. So if I set it to weight, um, it's just using a different weighting channel. So I'll go back to edge, and uh, we'll just select, for example, these three edges, and I'll increase the weight. And you can see you can really make things quite a bit bigger. And instead of interpolating along the length of an edge, 
it's actually interpolating at the mitering corner. So gives you the ability to create pretty nice um, weighting without even having to um, add multiple um, chamfer modifiers. Which is pretty good. Chamfer is just a radio. So that is the um, by weight. move over to this model. So this is a, a example showing, uh, so we have the, the ability to adjust the chamfer on the, as far as the, the minimum maximum uh, amount along the, the length, uh, we can also uh, change the, the depth. So if I go, if I just set this to, let me set it right now to fixed, um, and I change the depth, of course it goes negative, if I go negative, It'll go to a corner if I go up to a value of one. So we lock it between point or negative 0.5 and, and one. Um, but we can control it right now, so it's fixed. But if I set it to weight, and if I just go, I just kind of start here at the bottom. You see, I have just a very basic mesh, and then I add a data channel. And in this case, I said, okay, I want to use a node, so that's the node that I picked, so 0.02, and I've given it a minimum maximum radius. Uh, then I convert. Uh, a vertex data to an edge and then I output that data to the edge depth and then when I go to chamfer if I set it to by weight um, and if I move this point you'll see that it actually adjusts based on the distance of course you can go in uh, if I went into say the edible poly um, again we have a channel depth that allows you to adjust the, you know, any of the edges manually. All right, the next part is dealing with these uh, support edges. So uh, in this case, we're going to a single point, and if I move, for example, this helper, uh, the edge connects to it at all times, and that's fine. Um, if I move this to, uh, say, instead of uh, uniform, I move it to a radial. And then if I move this point too far over to one side, this support edge could actually cross over these, these uh, faces of the surface on the chamfer, causing some issues. So what we've done is made it uh, more dynamic, and it actually finds the closest point. So if, if I move this chamfer around now, you'll see that it actually moves from one end to the other end of the, uh, the actual mitered edge. So it does it both with, um, with the radial and the patch. So in this case, the patch, the, the single point is fine all the way through. But if we changed it to something like, um, you know, if we had a square, or even we had ends, um, those edges could cross. So you can see that they dynamically change. If I go back to radial, it's the same. So hopefully this keeps the model a little bit cleaner. Next, I want to talk a little bit about the um, the vertex chamfering and what we've done with the mapping. So uh, I'll just increase the, uh, the amount here. And um, before we didn't have you, you couldn't have number of segments on the the edge or, or on the vertex, which we do now, and we also support depth, so you can go. Uh, from again negative 0.5 to 1 and uh, if you look at it if I hide the edges you can see that the UV mapping stays pretty nice even if I add a um, unwrap modifier you 
can see that it actually generates very good UV, UVs uh, for those vertex chamfers. And even if I add another chamfer on top, let me see, I changed interior ID so you can see it. So even those edges, and if I throw another unwrap, stay really clean. And if I change this, uh, say I change this to um, instead of, we'll just set it to zero, so it's nice and flat. And then I reset the UVs. It updates in the view, in the, in the UVs. All right, next thing I want to talk about is um, what we're calling the, the radius bias. So in the case, like when you have this corner, um, a lot of times you'll get this kind of sharp, long, um, and I'll turn on the edges so you can see a little bit better, um, chamfer. So if I increase the chamfer a little bit, you can see it's just kind of a long, uh, narrow uh, chamfer. So what the radius bias does is it just uh, turns that into a complete perfectly uh, round radius. And it works not just, not just on uh, these corners like this, but anywhere where there, where there might be uh, some pinching going on. So even in these corners, I'll make this a little bit smaller. But you can see how it's, it's pretty wide here and then it narrows there. Increase the radius and Changes it nicely. All right. Uh, the next thing I want to show is uh, what we call the inset. So I'll go to this inset first, or this chamfer, and I've just uh, created a basic, uh, very simple chamfer. Um, and I've got I've got my filter off for minimum angle. So if I didn't have that on, it wouldn't chamfer anything. So I've got that on, and then I'm going to turn on inset. So if I have face inset, if you look a little bit closer, you can see it's actually doing almost like a, a face inset based on groups. Um, so if I change uh, the amount, you can see what it's doing. And this is actually a pretty good way to do things like, uh, it. well, for one thing, it cleans up the mesh, um, any kind of triangulization or anything that you might see. But also this is really nice because I can just offset it and create panel lines pretty easily. Um, so then I can add another chamfer. And this is, I'm just adding a, um, a simple chamfer on those edges, but we can get those uh, triangles. So if I could see any, a little bit. Uh, but if I turn on inset, you can see it cleans it up nicely, they go away. And so this is the other version of insets. We have both the face inset and flow loop. So I'll turn on the edge so you can see what's going on. And this is actually just um, creating an additional loop along the, the uh, surfaces that are already flat. So these two edges are on the same plane. Increase that, decrease it. And of course it goes along with the ride. So whatever the amount is here, it's basically just an offset. So if you increase or decrease your chamfer, uh, that'll, that'll stay the same. Right. Uh, yeah, so that's inset. The next thing is um, I wanted to kind of go over, this is a, a kind of a unique situation. So if I look at the sphere right now, you can see that the, the reflections on it look pretty good. Um, a curved surface. The uh, normals are, um, of course, in good shape because it's just a geosphere. And uh, as soon as I chamfer, so I'm just going to chamfer um, the vertices to create some holes. And I just have, uh, in the options, I have open chamfer turned on. Uh, but you can see it starts creating these little weird triangulations. So my reflections aren't as good as they used to be. And I'll go ahead and add a, a shell and another chamfer. 
and you can see it's it's even worse. So uh, we could try to do a inset, and this would probably help a little bit. So if I do an inset, you know, let's do a flow loop. Helps a little bit, but um, still not exactly what we want. So we actually have another tool that we introduced called Weighted Normals. And um, usually this works a lot better on hard surface, uh, more flat shaded um, models. But we've added some additional controls in it to try to help alleviate some of these kind of situations. So, um, so in this case, uh, I probably want to, instead of trying to weight this um, using calculating all the uh, surfaces, I'd like to kind of break up the surfaces, maybe possibly by a smoothing group. So if I turn on use smoothing group, then it's going to weight, for example, this blue area uh, differently than it uh, weights the, the red areas. So, uh, so I'm going to turn that on and I'm going to increase smoothing. So it's starting to look a little bit better. And then, uh, then I have this hard edge blending when I turn on any of these hard edge detections. Um, I can increase the, or I can actually set a hard edge blending. So I'll just increase that a little bit, and we can increase the iterations a little bit, maybe bring the hard edge blending down a little bit, and you can see that you can get better um, reflections this way. So, and then we, of course, we can display the normals, bring that down a little bit. So, much better than, uh, than with the default. So that's just a few things um, that I thought were pretty interesting with Chamfer. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, have a good day.